I've had a few people ask me to give a little bit of a rundown of how I've set up my bike for hunting. Um, this is about the fourth bike I've had, fourth ATV, over about 20 years of hunting from them. So I've had a fair bit of experience with how to get them right, well, how to get them right for myself anyway. So I'm basically just going to go through the setup, what I've added to the bike to get it to work well for hunting. Um, first of all, I'll, the bike itself is a 2010 Honda 420, fuel injected. It's the top of the range model, the FPA, F for four wheel drive, P for power steering and A for automatic. So I'm not going to go through the basics too much of the actual operation of the bike, but more of what I've added to set it up to suit me for hunting. Now, if it gives you some ideas, good and great. If, if it gives you some ideas of not what to do, well, that's a benefit as well. Either way, I'm just going to start from the front and work my way back. So first of all, um, I've just put on a winch, a worn, I think it's an XT 2500 synthetic rope. Fantastic uh, piece of gear. And uh, probably the biggest improvement I've done uh, and I think all factory bikes can benefit from it is changing the tyres. The standard tyres on most bikes are just very average. So in this case I actually replaced the standard steel rims and went for alloy mags and for the Maxxis Bighorns. Now these are the original Bighorns, not the Bighorn 2. The Bighorn 2 are slightly lighter, slightly lower height in the tread and a little bit narrower as well. So being heavier you do lose a little bit of power but what you gain now i say you lose a little bit you probably lose five percent it's, it's it's marginal but what you do gain with the alloy mags and the heavier tires is you get a better purchase on the ground it's as simple as that the alloy mags have got a slightly wider offset so your tracking of your bike is a little bit wider and in our situation where we hunt a lot on steep hilly country you want your center of gravity as low as possible. Now, in this case, that little bit extra width, a little bit extra weight on the tires down low, really gives you a solid footprint. And I've never really felt uneasy with these tires and rims. Uh, the bike setup now is quite good. Actually, it's very good. So anyway, the next thing moving from front to back is the LED headlights. Now what I've done here is basically just disconnected the high beam and transferred the high beam power up to these. The advantage of these obviously a lot brighter. I bought these from JCAR, I think they're 35 watt uh, from memory. Actually they are 35 watt. Uh, they are fantastic. And being on the handlebars and that little bit higher, you can actually pan around as, you, as you're riding as, of a night. And really for spotlighting now, all I use is these and the torch, the uh, Solar Force M9 torch mounted on top of the rifle. Uh, they weren't overly cheap. I think they're around, I think they're about $200 a pair, but well worth the money. Well worth the money. Now, uh, moving onto the dash, I've obviously got my GPS. I've mounted a USB outlet here, so if I want to run the USB power to the GPS, saving battery life, I can do that. I've got a waterproof speaker for my radio. This is the microphone and all my controls for my radio here. The radio itself is mounted in the back box. It's a Simico uh, SRM 9000, or it's a 9000 anyway. Um, these are fantastic. They're not cheap, but you can pick them up for anywhere from $100 to $300 Australian uh, second hand. Fully programmable. Um, yeah, just sensational. Like I said, I've got full control here. It is just, put it away, an essential, especially when you're out in some of the larger properties. Uh, obviously, I've got the winch control here. Now, I get a lot of questions asked me about my rifle rest. It's nothing spectacular. All it is is a bit of, I think it's 20 mil uh, tube that I use. Actually, I think it might be even a bit of 20 mil steel conduit. I just bend it up, uh, flatten the ends. But what I did do is actually took the handle, uh, the um, grips off, 
and actually machine down a solid bar put an m8 thread in the end probably i think it was went in about an inch deep into it the bar itself is probably about two inches long i drilled through the handlebars put a roll pin in it filed it off flat put the grip back on that gave me an eight mil thread on each end of the handlebars where i can basically just put a bolt in here and take it on or off as required in all fairness it never comes off the most astounding feature of the whole lot, besides the padding underneath, is I just made up like a, a, a lycra sock. And in all fairness, I didn't think this was going to last. This has been on here five years now, and it has just been fantastic. Gets wet, just cleans itself. Um, it's just got a good feel about it. It's, it's really good. It has really surprised me. Um, now, moving back further, we now move on to, well... Obviously I've got my rifle scabbards, um, but before I go on to those I really need to mention how I've incorporated the whole back. This is probably the, the biggest area where I've actually made a lot of modifications, a lot of work went into this. First of all I removed the original standard rear rack and made a complete new one. Now in that rear rack, there was obviously a lot of work went into it. But it was well worth it it's slightly wider so it virtually goes to the edge of the bike so it gives me a little bit more protection uh, i mounted uh, i integrated some led work lights into the back and from there i extended the rack down and made like a steel well i suppose what we call it, a steel guard which also supports the fiberglass scabbards that i molded and made myself now these are lined with actual sheepskin uh, maybe if I made them again um, probably artificial uh, lambs wool sheepskin whatever you want to call it it'll probably do you do have to make sure you put a little bit of lanolin um, sprayed in them every now and then just to keep any moisture out and that seems to work fine now what I've made these obviously slip in and out quite easily give full protection the rifles are obviously pointed in a safe direction just got this little bit of rubber here to protect anything flicking up from the scope. Um, this themselves actually protects everything. It, it, it has been really good. I've made a few of these. I've made them smaller. Um, they will fit just about all my guns. A little bit small for the shotgun, but I don't very often carry the shotgun on here. I've got a waterproof cover that I've made that actually just slips over in case of rain. Um, Again, that was just readily available from most um, <coughs> most shops. Um, so moving on from there, um, we've now got oh, at the at the rear. One thing I did put on because most bikes are quite loud, um, and the Hondas are probably a little bit louder than others because they don't tend to put a lot of baffles into their uh, exhausts, into their mufflers. Uh, they tend to stick with a simple stainless steel. Um, Oh, it was, it's a basic muffler and they're, they're quite uh, noisy so I sent over to uh, the US and ordered a silent rider now I had to modify it a little bit because of my alteration with a new rack but that has been a, a very very good uh, this is a very good uh, asset to be honest with you um, the Honda and one reason I do go for the Hondas is they're not CVT not CVT transmission uh, I can have full control over this bike so I can actually upshift to keep the engine noise down. Um, in my opinion, it's a better se setup for hunting. Uh, nothing wrong with CVTs, I just like the full control of the gearbox. Um, and in this case, it's basically from the touch of a finger. I can be on auto, put it in the drive, or I can be on manual and then just up or down shift from here. It is really good. Um, now what else uh, besides oh yeah I did look I molded these boxes a lot of work again when it is made a fiberglass mold uh, they do the job um, again everything's been on the bike now for probably about four or five years so it, it's seen the test of time the radio like I've mentioned is mounted in the rear box with the antenna on the back um, I'm getting to the stage now I think that's just about it Oh, every man needs a good knife and a bit of an overkill but 
that's that's my bone chopper and sticker if required now uh, yeah I've got a water bladder that I keep on there now this thing this thing I'm not going to take it out but these I can't believe these aren't available we made these ourselves they're actually a uh, it's about a 10 or 12 mil nylon rope um, we spliced it on the ends and I think it's about we made two at about 25 meters these are invaluable they've got about 50 percent stretch and basically you can hook onto one bike and just gun it and they are just like an elastic band they are just fantastic a normal cast snatch and strap is just too heavy for you know you're sort of talking a bike that's anywhere from two to four hundred kilos so uh, it, they're just just too heavy these work really well so get yourself some nylon rope ask them what sort of stretch it's got sort of 40 to 50 percent uh, splice it up puts a bit of plastic over the end of the splice and you're good to go um, other than that I think that's about it anyway if it's given uh, given a few ideas of what like I said what not to do and what to do this works quite well for me um, this, and in all fairness I really haven't got much I would change at this stage anyway I hope it helps you